All right, everyone, welcome back to science. We are now moving on to lesson 1.4 of our evolutionary history unit. Um, and we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in today, taking a look at a couple of fossils here. Um, we've got species A and species B. They're both imaginary species, but what I want you to do is look at the body structure. We've been starting to talk about why body structure is important for evolutionary scientists. And I want you to think about these five different um, structures in orange down here. And take a second, go ahead and pause the video. And I want you to write out what are all of the structures that you notice that these two species have out of this list in orange. So go ahead, take a second to pause the video, jot it down, or either think through which are the five that you think um, both species A and species B share. So go ahead and pause right now. All right. So if you um, started to think about these two species, um, what are the things that they have in common? Um, and starting to think about would they have a common ancestor? We want to look at those uh, structures in their body that are similar. So hopefully you notice they both have a skull. They both have front limbs. So remember limbs are kind of a general term we use for arms or flippers or legs. Um, all of those are considered limbs. Another thing that they have in common is that, that they both have a backbone. They both have a tail. But then the thing that this species A is missing that species B has is its back limb. So take a second to jot down what do you think, based on what we've learned so far, do you think that these two species have a common ancestor? So again, I want you to just pause the video for a second, answer this question right here. Do you think the two species have a common ancestor? Okay. So as we go into today's unit, there's gonna be a couple things that are important in helping us determine whether or not species have a common ancestor. So one of the vocabulary words that we're gonna to start to use is this term descendant species. So a descendant species is a more recent species that evolved from an ancestor population. So we're gonna take a look here at sort of, if you've ever seen a family tree, we're gonna look closer at what we call the tree of life, which shows all um, different animals, how they are all related. And this is just a piece of it. But you can see here that the ostrich and the crocodile would be considered descendant species um, because they broke off on this chain right here from reptiles and evolved from reptiles being their ancestor population. So an ostrich and a crocodile, both are types of descendant species. Another vocab word that we're going to talk about, which is kind of the opposite of a descendant, is um, when two species have a common ancestor. So an ancestor is an older population from which two or more newer species descended. And if we look at that same part of the tree, the common ancestor population is just um, reptiles, the ones that came before and eventually split off and evolved into birds and crocodiles. So those are two terms that we're going to want to be making sure that we're thinking through today. Again, we've got descendant species and common ancestors. So we're going to go back to the diagram from our 1.3 reading, and we're going to take a little bit closer look now that we know those two terms, descendants and common ancestor populations. And what I want you to do is, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video again, and there's four questions here, and I really want you to dig into this text feature because there's a lot of information in here. And this is a good time for you to start to practice your understanding of those words, descendants and common ancestors. So take a second to go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll briefly go over the answers in a second. Okay, so hopefully you were able to look at this and notice that the blue whale and the human, because they're in the same place as what we saw on the other side where the ostrich and the crocodile were at, those are descendants. 
Um, and then if we start to think about body structures, you should have compared these bullet points down here to find what are some common structures that they had that are going to show us that those two species um, <clears throat> are related to one another. And then the last one, hopefully you thought through kind of why might this be helpful for a paleontologist? Um, lots of different things you could have had for that answer, but as long as you thought it through, maybe you said something like it helps them to organize what is, which species is related to which one. It might help them to organize where their different structures are located. Um, any, anything that you could have thought of so long as you thought through this one and thought about how could this diagram help you as a paleontologist would be a correct answer. So we also talked about that, um, I previewed that I was gonna show you this thing that's called the tree of life. So this shows our unit we're learning about right now is all about evolutionary history. This tree of life shows how every single species um, evolved from a single celled organism millions of years ago. So you can see as it goes, there's just branches and branches and branches. And if you look closely, you might notice some of these that are further branches away that might sound familiar. There's birds right here and reptiles right here. And this is a super complicated tree of life that shows all of the different organisms and branches that could be possible, which is pretty cool. Um, we're gonna be using, and you're gonna notice later in our simulation, that we're gonna be looking at a tree of life, but it's not gonna be quite this complicated. All right, so now that we've talked about some of the vocabulary that we're going to be using today, we're gonna to be jumping into the main part of our lesson, which is going to be taking place mostly in the simulation. So in a second here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the simulation opened up for myself. Um, and if you have access to Amplify at home, I'm gonna walk through the steps on this video, but if you can get the simulation open for yourself, remember by you doing the work, you're always going to be learning more than just following along as we do it in the video. So please make sure if you've got a link or a way that you can log in and get to that, that you open up that simulation. Um, and you'll know you're in the right place when you open it up and you see this, um, and then click on this free explore. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in my window. Your window might look a little bit different, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are in chapter one of evolutionary history and that you're going to lesson 1.4. That's our lesson for today. And then activity three here is tracing structures in an evolutionary tree. So I'm gonna click on that one and it will in a second here pop up for that simulation. And again, this is something that if you haven't grabbed one yet, you're gonna probably wanna have a pencil and a piece of paper to jot down some of your thoughts. And then, like I said, we're gonna click on the free explore. And then we should see this map view. So if you are someone who is working on this independently at home, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the slide that you are going to want to pause on for yourself as you're working at home. So this right here is the main question that you're going to want to explore. We've started to talk about all different types of structures. Um, and in the simulation, you're going to want to find some of these different structures and see if you can look for different organisms that share similar structures. Once you found at least two organisms that share the structure completed, you're gonna to wanna to describe that using our new vocabulary. So this is the paragraph right here that you're gonna to wanna to write out on your piece of paper. And then in each of these blanks are where you're gonna put different words from the word bank. Um, just to kind of show those of you that are going to start to work on this independently for yourself. One last thing, you're going to want to be making sure that you are working in the tree ma ma part of the model right here. Um, and then clicking into the animals. And then by clicking on these little eyes, you're going to start to see where they're talking about shared structures as we go down the tree. Um, and you can just continue to open up and you're gonna see that this continues to expand. So you might have to 
continue to expand a little bit and go through here, or maybe make it smaller, and then click on what are some of these different structures that they're explaining as we're going down that the descendants are acquiring from those ancestor species. So again, if you are working on it at home, go ahead and pause the video here, pick out a couple of these structures and see if you can find what species have each of those. Um, and then when you're done, go ahead and finish up this slide here. Uh, I'm gonna walk through it on the simulation. So if you want to skip that part once you've done it independently, uh, just fast forward this video until you get to the blue slide. The blue slide is going to be where we join back up uh, together as a group. All right, so for those of you that are going to be following along um, on here with the simulation, the first um, structure that we're going to be looking for in our tree of life is going to be the backbone. We're going to be looking for organisms that share that as their similar structure. So let's bounce back into here. And I'm just gonna to start to click through in the vertebrates tab, because actually if I am clicking through these, what we're gonna notice is this tree of life starts off with some more simple organisms. And I know based on my background knowledge that mushrooms do not have a backbone. So I'm gonna to continue to kind of click through this. I might check and see what are some of these features that they're talking about. And we see that it says tissues, nerve cells, muscles. So still we have not found uh, our backbone. And getting into mammals. And here we're gonna notice that the first piece right here is a vertical column or a backbone. So as we go down and the descendants start to come off of this tree of life, anything that is to the right here, so anything that as we travel down our tree uh, is on the right, is going to be an organism that has a backbone. So we could write down For the backbone here, you can see the Pacific hagfish, great white shark, salmon, ostrich, crocodile, or really any species that is in these branches and even further on down the tree down here. Okay. Another one that we might look at is jaws. So moving from this point on the tree down through our tree, we're going to notice that um, all of these animals are going to have jaws. And if we were to look at this hagfish right here, which is kind of a weird name, but because that hagfish is not below on our tree, um, those, the structure of jaw, we know that the hagfish would not have a jaw. So let's just click on a couple more so that you can see. You're gonna notice that some of the, the um, branches here are empty and that's because there are fossils that we're going to later on in this unit put in there. Okay and here's for a last couple two to think about is that um, for neck and limbs remember anything to the right here is going to have limbs. So birds, crocodiles, and then even anything in this mammals tab we could write down as having limbs. So if you want to go ahead and write those down um, on your piece of paper, we said that these are some different organisms that had a backbone. And as you noticed, as the evolutionary tree progressed, the number of organisms that had a neck and a backbone, there were a few less. And then as we started to get into organisms that had limbs with digits, our list became even smaller. So to wrap up our writing um, piece here, now that we've had a chance to take a look at that tree of life, um, I want you to pause the video, um, even if you uh, were working on that simulation independently and make sure that you have this 
paragraph right here completed. It's going to give you a chance to practice using some of our vocabulary and plugging it into the correct boxes uh, or the correct blanks, I should say, up here. So go ahead at this point, pause the video, and then we'll come back together and check it in a moment. Okay, so let's take a second to check your thinking. Um, so as we we're going through this, really one of the big uh, concepts for this first chapter is that species are gonna inherit their body structures. We've been talking about that a lot and talking about how that's gonna help us solve where exactly that mystery fossil we've been looking into is going to be placed at the museum. And species are gonna inherit those from their ancestors. If two living species have some of the same, hopefully you went with body structures, this means that they are probably descendants of a common ancestor that also had the same body structures. So we can see that those body structures are really important to tying together which species had common ancestors. And now our last activity for the day, which is pretty fun. Um, we've got two species up here, two unknown species that you looked at at the beginning of class uh, with your warm up. And you're gonna take a second, we've got four fossils down here. They've got all different types of structures. And what you're going to want to look through is you're gonna wanna decide out of these four fossils, fossil one, fossil two, fossil three and fossil four, which of those looks more like the common ancestor of species A and species B? So take a second to think of yourself, for yourself, is a common ancestor, is this species gonna be something that came before or something that came after? Hopefully you remember that a common ancestor means it's going to be a species that came before both species A and species B. Remember that these are some important structures that you're going to want to look at. Um, the, the possible structures that we can observe with these fossils are the skull, the backbone tail, and then a front and a back limb. So what I would like for you to do to wrap up this lesson for today is think through for yourself, which fossil looks more like the common ancestor of species A and species B. If you're getting stuck, here are a couple uh, helpful phrases to help you get started. And to make sure as you are thinking through this um, that you are also explaining your thinking, not just saying which fossil you think is most closely related, but make sure that you are really pushing yourself to explain what you know as a paleontologist and what tells you that one of these fossils is gonna be more closely related than the other three. So at this point in the video, you're gonna to wanna to pause, take a second, answer which of these is the common ancestor of species A and B. Here's your first sentence you're gonna to wanna to start with and then going into explaining down here. 